Hello, it's Mark Lanier with your video thought for the day. So this week I'm looking at the Old Testament book, Micah, whose name could be translated all by itself. Who is like our God? Micah spends seven chapters answering that question, and we're looking at that this week. And today what I'd like to look at is something that's covered in the word play of the first chapter of Micah. Now, Micah was written in Hebrew in the 8th century BC. That's the 700s before Jesus. And, and in that Hebrew, there's a lot of wordplay that you don't necessarily get if you're just reading through an English translation. And what I would like to look at today is the wordplay that produces in us the reality of how we live and what happens to us in God's world when we choose the way we live. So it's found in some interesting passages, and what I'm trying to do here is to give them to you in a way that allows you to understand them. So let's start, for example, with this passage. Let's see if this works, if I bring it up real close to you. The houses of Oxen shall be a deceitful thing. Now, Oxen is a Hebrew word, and and it's the name of a town, but the key is what the name of the town means. Oxib means deception. And so you could take that passage and translate it this way, the houses of deceptionville shall be a deceitful thing. Think about that for a moment. God is saying, you live in Deceptionville, you're going to reap the results of deception. Deception will be your end, if you will. Here's another one. Pass on your way, inhabitants of Shafir, in nakedness and shame. Now, Shafir is a Hebrew word that could be translated beauty. So the town of Shafir could be beauty town, which would give us this translation. Pass on your way, inhabitants of beauty town, in shameful nakedness. You may think you're all arrayed in your beauty and splendor, but you're not. You'll be naked in shame instead of the beauty that you think might cloak you just because of where you are. How about this one? I like this one a lot. Let's see if I can put it up here for you to read. In Bethla Afra, roll yourselves in the dust. Now, Beth, or Beit in Hebrew means house. Uh, Beit La Afra could be translated very easily, the house of dust. And so now you've got it. In the house of dust, roll yourselves in the dust. You can't live in dirt and not get dirty. How you live and what you do will make a difference in your life. And, and, and it goes on and on. Um, here's another one. The houses of, ah, oh, here. How about this one? The inhabitants, I've got too many of these. For the inhabitants of Maroth, wait for good. See, the inhabitants of Maroth wait for good because disaster has come down from the Lord. Now, Maroth means bitterness. So the inhabitants of bitterness town wait for good. But destruction is coming down from God. Here's the point. Paul said it this way in Galatians 6, chapter 7. Whatever someone reaps, sows, that also will they reap. I mean, God is not mocked. God has set this world up. He's told us how to live under his blessings, under his anointing. If we live under his plans as, as walking in under an umbrella, the storm and the rains don't descend on you. But if you step out from under his plans, his holiness, his will, don't do it and expect to live in dust town and not get dusty. You get out from under the umbrella of his protection and the rain is going to deluge upon your head. 
God is not mocked. Whatever we sow, that also will we reap. So who is like our God, Micah asks? No one. And we should live showing we believe that to be true by following what he says. It's our thought for the day. I'll see you tomorrow.